I'll start now, Dan. Whoa! Sorry, mate. I'll start now, Dan. You flipping donkey. Here, you, Dan. How are you doing, Brian King, UK Flowing TV? Uh, episode four of the apprenticeship series. Uh, just, just going through little tips and tricks uh, to show the newcomers coming into the trade. Not showing too much, just basic stuff. Uh, today, Dan, we're doing uh, knife safety. Yeah. How to handle a knife, how to cut, uh, even down to how to pass a knife. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is the most dangerous thing in our job, really, the stand Yeah. The, the blades have got to be razor sharp. Yeah. Um, even down to passing the knife. The, yeah. You know what I mean? There's a way of passing I mean, that. If you're going to cut yourself, you're normally going to cut yourself with a blunt blade. Reason being, you're putting too much pressure on, and when it slips off, it's going to stick in you. So you normally cut yourself with a blunt blade, or the other cuts I've done is putting blades in. But but yeah, so you, you need to be really careful with these. Um, I've seen people flicking this wheel across the front of the blade to to uh, to undo it. Well, you're going to cut yourself. So if you use the use the back. It's all simple stuff. This. Uh, and, and people I know they'll put their used blades upright at, at the back and they will put use them upside down, and, yeah. and the new blades. Uh, I don't tend to put them upside down, I just put them behind each other and when I come across the old blades. That's I know, what I, I know I've gone through the knife. The, the new ones are at the front, the old ones are at the back and then you know, so you yeah. just come to a blunt blade. And I quite like a knife, it'll close up nice as well. If the wheel's a bit sticky they're a bit of a pain aren't they? Yeah. How do you pass your knife down? I, I always have a certain way I pass it. Pass yeah, me your knife. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it, exactly. Yeah. How I pass an app is like that. Yeah, yeah. And you take it away. Uh, the person you're passing it to, make sure they're looking at you. If they turn around to grab it and you've got it held out, you're obviously going to stick it in them. So, um, and, and then again, so you, you've, you've got your new blades in and you do a bit of instructing, don't you, Bri? And basically, I think what they're asking for in a training centre and should be on all jobs is when you've finished with your knife, Always keep it in your holster. It needs to be in the holster. We we like I'm the same as you, Dan. I have a pouch, yeah. so my knife's always in the holster. Uh, I remember I remember when I was an apprentice, uh, the guy I worked for, he he always had his knife lying about, and he had his knife lying about and kicked. He stretched the carpet with a yeah. knee kicker, yeah. and the Which knife was in the way. Yeah. No, no, it, it 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 got trapped oh, in between. between. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So then he he had quite a few stitches yeah, down his, his yeah. and he was out of action for quite a few weeks yeah, yeah. Uh, and e even things like even experienced fitters i remember a couple of years ago in uh carpet fitter of the year the semi-finals yeah one of the contestants uh he, he finished his bear brilliant did a cracking job uh he was tidying up all the bits of carpet at the end and he, he left his knife lying yeah. uh so anyways caught his hand with the knife bled on the carpet lost points and yeah. didn't get through to the finals because he lost points in that way i'd say every time i've entered i give myself that little nick that uh, you have to stop bleeding so yeah, yeah. I, i'd say that is one place you're going to cut yourself i've always nicked myself uh, there's only been one time that i've got away with not nicking myself so yeah it, it, i mean it happens to everyone even your scissors i use scissors a lot uh, back in the day when I was apprentice, you'd see these things sailing across uh, the, 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 from one end of Broadway yeah, throw, just throw to, to another and they'd be catching them. Well, people don't really want to do things like that anymore because it's too dangerous. So, I mean, it, with your scissors, yeah, if you're passing them to someone, just hold the blades, pass them. Uh, and, and again, don't, don't run with them because when you fall over, they're going to stick in, into you. There's one thing that I would say when you're in your van or your boss's van and you've emptied these your, your blades i don't know some people have got them in the dash uh, in the ashtray and they're loose in the front you need to tidy them away because if you do have an accident just remember you're going to have 50 stanley blades airborne in front of your face in the cab i have a tub i put all my uh, used blades in a tub yeah and my brother-in-law's a, a roofer yeah. so my blunt blades to him are really sharp blades yeah. Yeah. so when when my tub's full I, I pass them on to him. Yeah, he, he, he yeah. You, you can probably find someone, but yeah, be careful with your old blades. Um, I do tend to empty my knife into the bottom of my bag and then I empty my bag out, but that it's not the way to do it. You you should have a used blade tub, is ideal. Yeah, it's uh, in the van. Uh, so. Yeah, bang your old blades in. So, I, I, I mean, just passing these things around, you're likely to, to stick it in yourself. And then when you're working with it, um, is that in shot there, Brian? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
basically. It's like control as well. Yeah. Like recently, I've been working with apprentices, uh, and they seem to be fighting with an half. So yeah. it, it, you show them, put your thumb on the floor and use your thumb to control yeah. the knife yeah. or your finger. Yeah, or, or finger or knuckle. So you're not trying to wave something around and uh, I, I mean, you, you're going to cut yourself. Uh, and if I had a bigger piece, I'd be holding it away from where I was cutting. So, I mean, if you was wanting to cut something, and you, you, you use your fingers as a, as a guide. Um, but I use my thumb, just use your thumb. Yeah. How I do it. Yeah. That's that. That's it. Like that. I find yeah. that yeah. you've got loads yeah. of control in it. For some reason I can't do that, but I, I'm awkward, aren't I? But but uh, and uh, I tell you the place where I cut myself. Uh, I haven't. Do, I haven't done it lately. But basically, say you're cutting around an archetype. I mean, when I cut, this thumb wants to be. If you've got the thumb on on the floor there, when the knife slips, you're going to cut it. So if I'm cutting around an archetype. Uh, and I will, um, now this, you cut towards yourself like that. Now, I do it quite often, but that's somewhere you'll cut your thumb. When you're pulling the knife towards yourself, if you are gonna pull it towards yourself, you need to make sure it's, it's clear and off the other carpet. But when you're lifting something to try and cut it a bit awkwardly, tends to be when you stick the knife in yourself. So, um, well, the, go the golden rule I got it's taught from day keep one your hand in front. always cut away from you. Yeah. So, if we've got an example here, say we're using a straight edge. So, there's my straight edge. I mean, I will have my knee on it and I will keep this hand away from the straight edge. So, um, yeah, I I I'll bring the hand down. But y you are going to cut yourself if, if you've got your hand by your knife. And the straight edges are quite thin. I, I remember cutting the top of my finger off because. Yeah. I, had, I had the blade can, above me hand. If you're using a thin one, and what you tend to be doing is biasing the blade against the straight edge, when it slips off and you're pulling, it, it will run over yourself. Uh, they, you can get, um, they call safety straight edge, don't they? Um, my yeah. mate had one yesterday. Uh, and you can actually hold that, and it's harder for your knife to cut yourself. Well, when I started off, it was a piece of skirting, Do you know, the old yeah. contract skirting. Yeah. The yeah, hard plastic we used to use them, and uh, like I said, it was easy to veer off and cut yourself. Yeah, so, yeah. Know. So if oh, keep your knife and keep your knife in within range. If you're trying to cut like that, it's a bit dodgy. If you're trying to cut a bit nearer, move yourself with your knife. Just move back. Um, and again, if your face, if you're cutting on top of something, what I would go for, which is bad practice to cut on top of things. Um, you think you know your trade, but one day you'll nick something. So if I was cutting something on top of something, I would score it and, th and then I would run through the, the cut that I'd scored. And uh, you don't kill your blade on the floor and you don't damage anything underneath. So um, We're just using a small bit of carpet here, but yeah. in general I'd always have my hand uh, yeah. above me now. I, I would keep, try and keep my hand away. Um, but basically what I'm doing here is this thing we're saying about your fingers. I'm resting my knuckles on this this blade as well. It's a, I've not just got a knife here and I'm trying to push it, I'm locked in with that, I've got my knuckle on the floor, running against the straight edge, and I'm using my hand to, to guide it. So again, you just, just cut off through, and, and then you can easily follow the cut that you've done. So basically, the rule is, sharp blade, and cut away from you. Yeah, yeah. So, and I mean, if you know you're going to cut yourself, you're always watching out for it. I, I mean, when I come to do an awkward cut, I know they're sometimes uh, they're a cut that they will cut you. It tends to be right in the corner of a winder is the place there, the yeah. back corner of a winder. When I have to lift it up to do the last little two centimeters, that's a pr prime place to, to cut your thumb. Well, as a general, I, I, I've ever really cut myself now because you know, yeah. you know, it just comes natural where to put your hands and work. I know where you're what I know what comes natural. <laughs> you said that today. I know what's happening tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be plastered on my finger tomorrow. Yeah. But, but yeah, sa safety in the workplace, it's a big yeah, thing, especially so. when you're using young lads, Stanley Knives. Uh, like I said, I'm working with apprentices at the minute, and uh, it, the, the most important thing I'm teaching them is uh, how to use a knife yeah. properly without and cutting yourself. And, and basically, there is you can buy a work glove, can't you? Can anti slash gloves, so Kev yeah, but Kevlar reinforced glove. I find it a bit hard to work with yeah, gloves yeah. on, but in the beginning, at, at the start, you, you it'd be advisable to wear the glove because it, it heals up quicker with the glove on. Um, 
But other than that, yeah, just be careful. Don't push too hard. If you're pushing hard on a knife, that's another time that you're going to lose control. Um, I've got, I've got a cut here, about that long, um, and I stuck the full knife into me from reaching forward somehow, and, and I cut myself out. And it's a bad cut. Looks like a smiley mouth. So I'm full of scars. I, I had the nickname Zorro when I was an apprentice because I used to cut myself that much. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the week, I used to laugh. The could have been worse. Plasters could've, on everything. Could have been Tonto. <laughs> <laughs> Is he the cowboy? <laughs> we'll leave this video. Right. Anyway, down. Right, down. We've got uh, we've got a bigger piece of carpet. We've got a two meter straight edge. Uh, th this is the straight edge I use. It's yeah. the uh, like a, what rolls up. Uh, every it, every man's straight edge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like I said, that's very very thin, so yeah. It, it, yeah. it will I be mean, easy. Even the, the sides are sharp. They're that thin, aren't they? These? Yeah. Yeah. So. Like I said, you must keep your hand away from as you're cutting. Yeah, yeah. So, if you start your cut, obviously you're going to have to have your hand near the beginning of a cut because you're at the end of your straight edge. But basically, if you keep behind the knife as you're cutting, so that's halfway through, and then if you want to cut all the way through, you can sink the knife in. Again, I'm running my knuckles on the floor. That's setting the depth of the knife. What would you do if you need to move your straight edge down, Dan? I'd, I would leave the knife in, move the straight edge down, line it up with the cut above, and then just and, use and it as it a guide, the blade, and and then you're back again. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I've cut all the way through there, or using your your knuckle again, you can just do a score cut, and then once you've cut that, you can follow the score. So if you can't knife that straight through into something for some reason. Uh, you can do a half cut, lift it, and follow the cut. So you, if you were, if you were, say doing a joining carpet, and you were yeah. cutting the carpet from the back. That's how you'd do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, if I was cutting from the back, there's a, there's a, there's a couple of ways. But basically, you don't want to cut the pile, and the pile slightly leans. So if you do go straight through a carpet, so basically, what you really want to do if you're doing a join is only cut into the backing. And, and again, you, the, I'm using that knuckle to to, to support that. And and when you're cutting a joint as well, you've got to keep the, the, the blade upright. You can't start leaning no, no. to the left or the right. You've got to keep yeah, it, yeah. Otherwise, you start shearing the pad. Uh, yeah, so if you keep the blade upright, as upright as you can, like because you've cut an angle, like Brian said, you can shear the pile. But you, you'll also put a bevel on your cut. And if you've gone in and out and in and out, you, you, your cut's going to be all wobbly. So you're basically, again, you, you run on your knuckle and you follow your straight edge. Uh, you can walk your hand down, you can move it down, but you really want to keep away because when you do that, it hurts. Uh, also, a lot, a lot of fitters cut the stirs off like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, so sometimes I'll do it like that. Most of the time, I use a raw finder. Mm. You're talking to someone who cut them like that for 25 years. Yeah, yeah. And when you do. Uh, your axminsters and things you can see the pattern through the back but when you come to a, some sort of a printed or over tufted carpet you can't see the pattern from the back the only way you've got is to row find I won't do a flight of stairs unless I row find and row cut now uh, that's the revolution in my life that is I learned yeah. how to do it years ago never bothered with it got back into it yeah I was stupid not doing it all the time but that can be another video Dan yeah yeah anyway another great one cheers Dan see you next time see you thank you